Welcome to Reading on Headlines, where I read the tarot on news headlines. On today's episode, I am talking about the Twin Flame Universe, which is an online cult that claims to find your Twin Flame Union, where you awaken to your Twin Flame connection, actively engage in spiritual work, and align your consciousness with love. That is love with a capital L, you guys. The reason I don't want to talk about this is because one, my content is in the spiritual space. And two, when we think of cults, we usually think of these compounds where thousands of people live together and they worship their very human leader who claims to be a god. But this cult works a little differently. I first learned about this online group through the Prime documentary series named Desperately or Desperate Seeking Soulmates. And then the Netflix documentary, Escaping Twin Flames. I will put out a little disclaimer that these are my own opinions or they are just things that I found on the internet and compiled in this episode. You can find the links to any articles that I used in the show notes. So what the hell are twin flames? If you have spent any time in the online spiritual space, you will have come across the term twin flame in some way, which is used as sort of a synonym for soulmates, but it gives a more whimsical or spiritual spin, if you will. It's supposed to be more intense. The idea of a twin flame is that sometimes a soul is split into two and then put into two different bodies. And when you meet your twin flame, you feel like you recognize the person through this intense bond. The relationship is intense. You keep coming back together, etc. And then another thing about twin flame connections is that they are tumultuous, that there's this push and pull, lots of challenges to overcome. And on this, like on its own, it doesn't necessarily sound like a bad thing, but I will say that it also kind of sounds or feels like a recipe for disaster. A lot of relationships just don't work out. A lot of toxic relationships have that push and pull and that keep coming back together. That doesn't mean that they're your twin flame. But who are you to know the difference when all you've done is read an article or watch a video on twin flames? And well, that is where Twin Flames Universe comes in. This was started by Jeff and Shalea. Uh, Twin Flame Universe, or Twin Flames Universe it is, promises that they they know the way out of the suffering of separation. They use this term, suffering of separation, multiple times on their website. And they promise for you to permanently and forever be, quote-unquote, into his arms with eternal love they offer quote the like quote unquote key to liberation and love in life in their teachings they offer harmonious twin flame union and they say that it works quote unquote every time for every single person like holy shit that is a lot to promise and to offer and it kind of sounds impossible right But don't worry, you can sign up for their free Twin Flame Ascension introductory course. This includes a letter from Jeff and Shalea. It includes the infamous mirror exercise, which we'll get into later. The Twin Flame Universe newsletter. Three surprise gifts that they think are really sweet. And then the eight lessons of the introductory course. On their website, they offer a Twin Flame meditation, a book with Twin Flame basics, and then also Twin Flame Ascension coaching. Again, we're going to get into that more. But what I found very interesting on the FAQs is that if you can't afford the coaching, they suggest that you must have a money block and the mirror exercise will help you with that. So what the fuck is a mirror exercise, right? So the mirror exercise that Jeff and Shalea teach goes as follows. And they have an entire video on this. They also have an entire web page about this. The first step is that you identify what 
it is that has upset you. For example, or they use the example of, I'm upset with my twin flame because I feel rejected by them because they ignore me. And I will say, they don't use they, them pronouns. They use she, her, she, but wait, she, he, him, her, that, 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 that's what they use. And that's going to come into the story later. But then you do that, you identify what has upset you. And then the second step is that you invert the pronouns to point to yourself. So in that example, you change it to, I'm upset with myself because I feel rejected by me because I'm ignoring myself. It makes zero sense, but okay, we do what they say. And then in the third step, you ask yourself if it is true and you have to answer yes, that it is true. And then lastly, you have to love the upset part of yourself, which they have it worded really strangely on their website. And I couldn't really make sense of what they actually wanted you to do in this fourth step. But then they also said that the fourth step is the most important. So do with that what you will. I found a quote from Dr. Yanya Lalic, I hope I say that correctly, I'm probably butchering that, but uh, she is an ex expert on cults and coercion, and she said that the mirror exercise, quote unquote, is said to be there to help you, but it's actually there to tear apart the self. In a documentary, ex-members of the Twin Flames universe talk about their experiences with the group, as well as their experiences with the mirror exercise how Jeff and Shalea would tell the members that they haven't done the exercise enough or they would have worked through their blocks. And this very much is in line with what they literally have on their website, that if you have money blocks because you think the uh, coaching is too expensive or you can't afford the coaching, you should do the mirror exercise. <laughs> it literally says it on the freaking website. I want to go a little bit more into the teachings of Twin Flames Universe just because I think it's important that we hear how some of the spiritual lingo that many of us are familiar with are being used by a cult-like group so we can be uh, aware of it and hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, not fall for it. So the group teaches that everyone has a twin flame, which is like an intense version of a soulmate, which Jeff and Shalea will assign. And this was a little bit different in the beginning of the uh, group um, where, the, yeah, I mean, they were still assigned, but they were assigned from outside of the group. So the member is encouraged to pursue their twin flame. Like I said, initially, these twin flames were outside of the group, which led to some of the members facing restraining orders as well as criminal charges for stalking. I am not kidding. This is covered in the documentaries as well. I know I keep referring to the documentaries a lot, but those were my main sources for like what I knew, but I knew I also couldn't like really link them in the credits. So um, there are a lot of articles that I have linked that are also covering things that are being said in the documentary. So I hope that makes sense. And then, of course, another teaching is the mirror exercise in which the member blames themselves for what's bothering them. And then the group took a turn and the twin flames that were assigned by Jeff and Shalea were all from inside of the group. Obviously, this created a problem because like 80% of the people in the group were women or identified as women. And the idea was that every twin flame connection consisted of the divine masculine and the divine feminine, meaning that every couple should have a man and a woman in it. And I do remember something, but I don't hold, hold me to this, but I do remember something where they would say that your body should, ma should match your divine masculine or feminine, whatever it is that you are, your body should match that. So in the Netflix documentary, we follow the journey of a lesbian couple who got together more in the early days of Twin Flames Universe, and they were constantly used to promote how Twin Flames Universe worked. 
But then when these new teachings were introduced, one of the women in the couple was forced to accept the divine masculine. Jeff wanted her to change her name to a masculine name and to use he, him pronouns. And there is footage of this in a documentary. It's really, really hard to watch where you see that this couple, especially the one who is being forced to be male, I guess, you can see how uncomfortable they are with this. You can see how much Jeff is pushing it, even though it's very clear by not only the body language language and the social cues, but also by what they're saying that they don't agree with it. But this was pushed so much that they not only just left the group, they were kicked out of the group because they didn't do what Jeff wanted them to do. And again, especially the Netflix documentary goes really into how they went about this. And there were, like I said, there were way more women in the group than men. So if you want to give everyone a twin flame connection, saying that there has to be a divine masculine and a divine feminine in in the in the couple, how are you gonna do that? In a documentary, they talked about a list that was sent out with twin flame connections that Jeff and Shalea had channeled, where the first name of the couple was the Divine Masculine, meaning that if that was someone who identified as a woman, Jeff and Shalea saw them as a man and wanted them to transition. Of course, they denied all of this, saying that the people who transitioned did so willingly. Uh, There's even a, I don't know if it's a phone call or just a recording of a cop talking to Jeff, where he's like, oh, how can it be a cult when it's an online group? Oh, how can I even brainwash someone to do what they don't want to do? It's really nasty and really messed up. But all of that to say, uh, those who did transition... And who now use he, him pronouns. I do think we should respect that. Uh, Just that is something that I personally believe. But this part of the documentary was really painful to watch. Because there are more and more anti-trans laws put into place in the United States. Because of all this anti-trans rhetoric that conservatives are spewing. I found a quote from a former member who compared the cult's ideology to what might happen, quote-unquote, if excessive liberal progressives got drunk and had a baby with conservative Christians. And I feel like that's so true, because it is a form of conversion therapy if you coerce and force people to transition because you put them together in a supposed connection saying that there can only be one masculine and one feminine partner. Uh, Someone that I thought was really interesting to be featured in a Netflix documentary was Dr. Cassius Adar Adair. I don't know how to pronounce his name, Uh, but he has a business where he does consulting, fact-checking, and he provides education on trans and non-binary history. And he said something that really caught my attention. He said, quote, I don't hear in the testimony of the people in Twin Flames universe something like, I want to get closer to who I am. What I'm hearing them say is, I want to get closer to who I'm supposed to be. That raises a red flag for me. That doesn't feel right to me. Unquote. That is what he says. And then he goes on to say, we don't want there to be a supposed to be about gender. We want gender to be something you are allowed to discern on your own. He also said, I don't see Jeff and Shalea as supporting trans people by saying, hey, you can take hormones or get surgery. I see Jeff and Shalea supporting anti-trans people by saying, the gender you are is not determined by you. It's determined by the people who have power over you. And that was so interesting to hear and uh, also just a little sad. And I just think that it's so scary that these two people have so much power over others. And Jeff claims that he cannot brainwash others into doing what he wants, into doing things according to him. But that's not true because there's a lot of manipulation going on. There's a lot of bullying going on, but then rewarding them 
when they do things according to Jeff. There is so much evidence to prove this, that this is correct, that this is right. Um, and, but, and he just has no leg to stand on, but he just keeps on lying. And it's really baffling. And when you watch the documentary, you will see exactly what I mean. Where there's even a part where he's being interviewed by someone. I don't remember who exactly it was. I think it was a writer of a Vanity Fair article about Twin Flames Universe. Where the author, the journalist, asks questions where she already knows the answer. She already has the proof to back it up. But Jeff denies it and then she brings up the proof. And then he goes on about her that she doesn't know it and that she is believing misinformation or that she is just, that, that that she's just wrong and choosing to believe in lies it's the way he words it he is so sure of himself it's almost kind of scary um but yeah it's it's scary to think how much power these two have. And they're actually also giving that power to others in their group too. So I talked about the Ascension coaching, the Twin Flame Ascension coaching. Well, those who have found their Twin Flame, they can be coaches for Twin Flame Flames Universe as well. And this is where my MLM red flags right up because you can be part of Twin Flames Universe and of course, give them a shit ton of money to be in it. But then you can also earn money yourself by teaching their teachings to others. Each member is encouraged to sort of start their own Twin Flames brand, pointing back to Twin Flames Universe and mine for contacts for new recruits. One student was told to bring in more victims of trauma. And another student was instructed to seek new LGBT and special needs students. So I don't, I don't think I have to tell you that that is fucked up. <laughs> and these new potential students will usually find the Twin Flame Universe content through YouTube, whether that is through Jeff and Shalea's channel or the channel of one of their students. And it's really easy to get sucked in through the Twin Flame book as well, and then watch hours of videos of them that they have about the law of attraction, Reiki, vibrations, karma. And then as a brand new Twin Flame Ascension coach, one ex-member said, you have to stay up to date with the newest courses and products to stay in good standing. Again, my MLM alert is howling loud, especially because these coaches usually don't really get paid a lot. And Jeff's idea was that you can make a lot of money doing the coaching for them, for their business, but that's not the case. And there are a lot of like super high standards before you can even be a paid coach. You first have to do like over like hundreds of hours of free coaching to train yourself up, I guess, before you can even be a paid coach for them. I don't know. Again, MLM alert, alerts howling loudly. Jeff and Shalea banned this specific member that I just talked about from talking about their financial difficulties because, quote, she was choosing poverty consciousness, unquote, and she could like contaminate the group if she talked about it. You can read more about this ex-member story in the Vice article that's named How Twin Flames Universe YouTubers Monetize Heartbreak and Trauma. Again, I have all the articles that I used for today's episode in the show notes. For now, I want to grab my cards and look at this whole situation. Because, like I said, I'm in a spiritual space. There is a lot of lingo that Jeff and Shalea use for their, I want to call it brainwashing, for their cult that we see in regular spiritual spaces as well. So I just wanted to be really sure to put out this information to warn you that, you know, not all spiritual leaders are upstanding, are good, are worthy of your follow, of your attention, your time, your money. So the group is still active online, as are their coaches as, and the creators. 
are still st uh, sending people to Twin Flames Universe. And that is, again, why I wanted to record this episode, to make other spiritual people and tarot readers aware of what Jeff and Shalea are doing, to be aware of how some spiritual lingo can be misused for the quote-unquote leader's gain. So let's take a look at how we can discern the authentic and good spiritual leaders from the toxic and dangerous ones. Let's take a look. The good ones, two of cups, they will truly want the best for you. Oh my God, it's so funny. I'm pulling the two of cups to discern the authentic and good spiritual leaders and then the devil for the toxic and dangerous ones. So the two of cups, I think the authentic and good spiritual leaders truly want a genuine connection with you and that is how they how they work like they want that true and genuine connection with you not always like super personal because if you are like a leader or an influencer like a spiritual influencer i guess i, I guess i could fall under that but i prefer content creator um just terror reader and content creator please but they rely on that actual connection to provide value to you while the toxic and dangerous uh spiritual leaders crave that control i'm using the fifth spirit tarot as i have been for the last couple of episodes and here in this devil card we see two hands um playing like string dolls with humans uh, so it talks about being in control having control exerting control so i think that the difference here is that good and authentic leaders will focus on a genuine connection, will want you to be reminded of the fact that you have free will and that you do have it in you to make the best choices and to do what is best for you. But maybe you need, need you know, a little guidance. And the toxic and dangerous ones are like, no, this is the way that you are supposed to do it. This is how it works for everyone, right? This is how what Jeff and Schley I have on their fucking website saying that it works every time for every single person. That is a wild claim. I can't believe that they have it on the website. But then again, I can't believe some of the shit they've said in their private Zoom calls. Anyway, that is one part of how you can discern the authentic um, and good spiritual leaders from the toxic and dangerous one, ones. And the other one, I don't even have to pull cards for um, but it's also kind of hard. What I want to say is use your intuition, use your head sometimes a little bit more than your strong desires. Because I think a lot of people that got caught up into Twin Flames universe got caught up in it because they had a strong desire for love. They knew that they were capable of being loved they knew that they had a lot of love to give they knew that they were worthy of love but they maybe were a little insecure of how they could go about it how they could find love maybe some of them didn't even think that they were worthy of love and they went into the group to hopefully get some validation but all they got was bullied by jeff and shalea they got stripped of their self-worth. They got blamed for everything that is wrong in their lives. And it is just so sad. I personally truly believe that people who get caught up in cults aren't dumb, aren't unintelligent, aren't easily persuaded even necessarily, but they have a desire for something. And here this person is who swoops in, and offers them exactly what they desire and how can you not fall for that honestly and, and sometimes those red flags be looking real green if they offer something that you truly truly desire and it can be hard to take off those rose colored glasses so that's just something that i want to say that if someone offers you something and say that it works for every single one every single time and they are asking a lot of you they are I don't want to say forcing because at some point it doesn't even feel necessarily like forcing. But if they are 
trying to make you see things where you really have to do a lot of brain twisting, then maybe maybe there's something wrong there. You know, use your head, use your intuition. Uh, don't get too persuaded by your desire, what you want in life, because there are multiple ways to go about it and you are worthy and you are loved. I just wanted to say that. <sighs> okay, so we are going to go into viewer messages uh, this is something that I really want to do every single episode. So on my last episode, that one was posted on YouTube as well. I got some um, comments. Uh, someone said, and I'm got, not going to say the names. Uh, someone said, I'm so disgusted that Biden is running again. His support of the genocide, the fact that he is old AF, that this is the best we can do is such a bummer. And this was a, react, a comment on my uh, recap of 2023 where I also did 2024 predictions um, and I said yeah I feel that <laughs> because that is pretty much what I said in the episode as well and then another person commented this was my first time listening to this kind of episode of your content and it was so insightful I am desperately clinging to that star card you pulled same same and I also said that I just really appreciate all of you listening. It really is a passion project and posting it on YouTube is a test. So thank you so much for listening to Reading on Headlines. Head over to readingonheadlines.com to send me a voice message with a request, question or topic so you can be featured on the next episode. Stay safe, stay sane and do some self-care today. <laughs>